What's up, everybody? Welcome to another World Cup preview here on Touchline Talk. As always, before I get started talking about Switzerland, I want to take a moment to say be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the final group of World Cup previews for Group H and so that you are ready to go for all of the video content I will be putting out during the World Cup. You can also find my written work on Substack, touchlinetalk.substack.com, as well as on Medium. Okay, today, rounding out Group G with Switzerland. This is Switzerland's 12th World Cup appearance, 5th in a row. I'm not going to list all 12, but 5 in a row for Switzerland. They've been a mainstay in this tournament recently, and they are back for 2022. Best finish in the World Cup for Switzerland on the men's side, 1934, 1938, 1954 quarterfinals. So that is the best Switzerland has ever done. To get to Qatar, Switzerland picked up 18 points in a group that included Bulgaria, Italy, Lithuania, and Northern Ireland. Of course, the noteworthy name there is Italy. This is the reason, basically, Italy is not participating in this World Cup, is that they didn't win this group. Switzerland took that spot that you maybe would have expected to go to Italy as the automatic qualifier. And so here Switzerland is, and there's Italy sitting at home. Key players. This is another one where it's pretty easy to identify the guys I wanted to talk about, starting with Ricardo Rodriguez. This is Ricardo Rodriguez's fifth major tournament, 2014 World Cup, Euro 2016, 2018 World Cup, Euro 2020. He started every game in all four of those tournaments. He had the fourth most minutes on this team during qualifying, He's entering Qatar with exactly 100 caps in his international career. He's not the big name you think of when you think of this team. I'm going to get to those two guys next. But when you talk about kind of the consistent core of this Switzerland team throughout this run where they've been factors in all of these major tournaments, be it World Cups or European Championships, Ricardo Rodriguez is always there. As I just said, he's starting every game in all of these tournaments. He's a versatile defender. He can play center back. He can play left back. He is kind of, and especially on a back line that's seen some change that when you think of the biggest names on this team, you don't think of the defenders. Ricardo Rodriguez is that one guy who is just always there. One of the first names to write in on the team sheet for this Swiss men's national team. So I wanted to highlight him and give him his props because it's easy for him to get lost in some of the other players on this team, but he has been vital and will continue to be in Qatar. Next, Jordan Shakiri, of course. He has started every game at major tournaments since the 2014 World Cup, just like Ricardo Rodriguez. He has scored in every major tournament going back to the 2014 World Cup. He has been sensational on the biggest stages. It's part of what has been sort of the formula for success for this Swiss team. He just moved to Major League Soccer before this season that just ended a few weeks ago. Seven goals, six assists with the Chicago Fire in his first MLS season. And yes, it may seem kind of strange to have a guy playing in MLS carrying an attack for a team as how we thought of as the Swiss team. But Zerdin Shakiri is just different. He kind of makes you toss logic and your general assumptions out the, out the window because he fits a very specific mold and he, do, he does very specific things that, for example, Liverpool don't necessarily need. And he doesn't do a lot of the things Liverpool do need, a.k.a. pressing, work rate, chaos. They are not a creative team that, you know, sort of play to Shakiri's strengths. So his fit at the club level is a little bit trickier where he can go to MLS and he can just do his thing because it's MLS and he's Jordan Shakiri. So in that sense, it's a great fit. The difference with the national team is you need those guys who have that bit of magic, that ability to decide a game, to take your breath away. He is one of the more technically gifted players in the world. He's limited outside of that. But just the way that this Swiss team is set up, he and, and the other part of this too is he's a guy who needs to have a team built around him. 
And at the club level, at this point in his career, that's not going to happen in Europe. But this Swiss team is built to get the most out of him. It's why he's been so successful on the international stage. So his, you know, you sort of comparing club to country. He's one of those guys, and there are a decent amount of them across the world that it just it doesn't match up. And that's kind of the point. He takes it to another level. He has these different kind of responsibilities with the Swiss national team that play to his strengths. And so he is absolutely, he's been an essential part of this team. He continues to be, he is a guy who is going to make a, not make a name for himself. He's already done that plenty of times, but be a huge factor, a point of discussion for this Swiss team, even though he's got some teammates and especially the guy I'm going to talk about next playing at the highest level. He's not sort of throw that out the window when you're talking about Jordan Shakiri. It just doesn't matter in this conversation about the Swiss national team. Third guy, Granite Jaka. 106 caps now. Just got to 200 Premier League appearances with Arsenal. Yes, it's not always been good at Arsenal. In fact, sometimes it's been quite bad. The relationship with the fans, the whole captain experiment his overall performance, his recklessness, and lack of emotional intelligence. All of that is true. Two things need to be acknowledged when you're talking about Granite Jock and where he is in his career heading into this World Cup. One, he has been outstanding for Arsenal this season. He is sort of going against all of these narratives that have been written about him and most of them have a fair bit of truth. He hasn't always been the player he is right now for Arsenal. But he is a lockdown starter for a team that is winning the Premier League, and that is not by happenstance or good fortune. He has earned that spot in that starting lineup, and he has kept it because of what he has done on the field. The second part is, whatever, sort of similar to Shakiri, whatever you might associate Granite Jaka with, when it comes to Arsenal and it comes to the club level, he's a different player when he puts on the Swiss jersey. By and large, he has been excellent on international duty. And so you put those two things together, look at what he's doing at the club level right now, imagine what that could mean for his performances for Switzerland. Now, doesn't mean that he's going to be even better than he's already been for Switzerland. That bar is already set at a high standard. My point is, again, simply, you got to sort of take a minute and, and separate the club and the country part of this for this Swiss team in a way you don't necessarily for a lot of the other teams in this tournament. You know, he He's kind of the de facto captain without wearing the armband at the club level. You see the leadership, however you may feel about it. <laughs> you see it out there. He Again, 106 caps. He has been there consistently throughout this entire run for Switzerland. Didn't play a huge role in qualifying because of the way the, the calendar lined up and injuries and all of that. It's Granit Jaka. He's in possibly the best club form of his career coming into this tournament. You should expect to see more terrific Granit Jaka performances in a Swiss national team jersey in Qatar. That's kind of the end of the story there. In terms of a breakout start, this is a team, there weren't many great options, but the one that stood out to me is Noah Okafor. Red Bull Salzburg striker, five of his eight caps for Switzerland have come this year, 2022. Four of them came in the June 2022 international window. So he doesn't have a lot of experience with this team. He is still in the process of breaking in, but he has, be, he has become a consistent call-up over the past year. Three goals in the Champions League group stage for Salzburg. He's already got seven in the Austrian Bundesliga. He's closing in on this total from last season. So that's part of why I went with him as a breakout star. Is he's kind of having his breakout moment. And you could argue it was last season because he was productive both in the Champions League and the Austrian Bundesliga last season. But he's taken it to another level in 2022-23. And now he is a factor on this Swiss national team. And the final thing I'll throw out here. I'm going to talk about this more in a minute, but from a breakout star standpoint, there is an opportunity if Okafor can get the minutes and he can take advantage of them at this tournament, 
he could end up playing a very big role for this team. I don't see things going that way. He's got some work to do from a depth chart standpoint to get those opportunities. But I could, and I can envision a world in which he gets off the bench, comes off the bench in one of those group stage games, scores a goal, is really impressive in a you know a shorter cameo appearance, which then leads to a start the next game and leads to him getting a spot in that starting lineup if Switzerland are able to get into the knockout stage and make a little bit of a run. And then you're able to have this conversation about Noah Okafor on the international stage, which is kind of the idea behind these breakout stars. So it's not a perfect fit. I'll acknowledge that. I didn't love my options for Switzerland because of the amount of experience on this team. But Noah Okafor, regardless of what happens at this tournament, is a name you need to know because he is going to be playing for a high-profile team in a major five European league very, very soon. And this tournament could end up accelerating that process and, and sort of raising his profile if the chips fall correctly for him and he's able to take advantage of his opportunities. The bottom line for this team, why you should be confident, opti- you know, the reason for optimism is quite simply consistency. Four straight major tournaments they have gotten out of their group be it a World Cup or a European Championship. You also might remember, this is the team that knocked out France at Euro 2020. And it is the same core of that roster. These guys know how to play with each other. They know how to navigate major tournaments. They are difficult to play against. And they have just enough top-end talent that on the right day... They can do things like hang with France. And, you know, there's been a managerial change. Certainly there was some concern about can this continue and can you sort of take that next step with how successful they had been. You know, you never want to make a managerial change in that situation. But so far so good on that that front. It seems to be a pretty smooth transition. There's just such a good foundation for this team. And every time they show up at a major tournament, They get the most out of their players, this group. You never walk away feeling disappointed about, at least this is, I'll just say this is my personal opinion, but I never walk away feeling disappointed about the way Switzerland performed in major tournaments, which is a real testament to this group of players and the way that they deliver on the big stage. You can't say that about a lot of teams that you are always you know, kind of applauding what they did, feeling like they went as far as they could, they did what they could to give themselves a chance to make some noise. And Switzerland have been just about as good as any team in the world at doing that over the past, you know, 8 to 12 years. Big question, area of concern. Is somebody going to score consistently from that number 9 position? Is somebody going to help out Zerdin Shakiri on the goal-scoring part of this equation. Nobody scored multiple goals at Euro 2016 or the 2018 World Cup. Harris Seforovic and Shakiri both had three at Euro 2020. That is part of the reason why they were able to make the run they did. Brio Mbolo is the only player on this World Cup squad who scored multiple times in World Cup qualifying. You notice there were not a lot of crossover with the names. Shakiri scores and chips in in that category at every major tournament. That's not my concern. My concern is if Shakiri gives you one or two goals, can you get enough from the player who's supposed to be your finisher? And can you get somebody who actually finishes those chances consistently? That's part of the question with Mbolo if he's the guy to get these opportunities first. Who is who is the goal scorer and is there one? You know, kind of two parts to the same question there, if you will. And this is an incredibly, incredibly important question because to me, it is the determining factor in how far this team can go. If nobody if whoever's up there, whether it's who's starting, guys coming off the bench. 
And this is, again, why I feel like Okafor might have an opportunity because if somebody gets hot, I fully expect that player to start getting that starting position. And if somebody is struggling, there very well may be a change at the striker position. This is not a sort of set plan of attack when it comes to the number nine. If somebody, if nobody emerges as a reliable goal-scoring threat who's capitalizing on these chances, because Shakiri is more of a creator than he is a goal scorer. It is possible, certainly possible for the Swiss team to get out of the group stage. But it's going to be a difficult task because this is one of those groups where you look and you just don't see a weak link. Certainly on paper, they are the second best team in this group. But the margin between Team 2 and Team 4 is incredibly small. Small enough that it can be decided by a single striker getting hot or a single or a team not having that production from the number nine position. On the flip side, if somebody gets in a really good run of form and is pouring in goals, not only is this team going to get out of the group stage, this team becomes one of the more dangerous ones outside of the obvious favorites in the entire tournament. You saw what they did against France. They play in UEFA. They are not scared of anybody. They see the best teams in the world consistently. The idea of going up against Brazil isn't going to phase them because they play France. They play England. They play, you know, Granit Xhaka's teammates with these guys. So from a dark horse standpoint... If it, if it gets rolling, I could see this really starting to sort of snowball and Switzerland becoming incredibly dangerous. There are some teams where I just have a mental hurdle believing they can actually continue to overachieve sort of round after round. It's how I felt about Villarreal during the Champions League, right? Look at what they're doing. Great story. They're obviously playing really well. They're fundamentally sound. They're making you beat them. But at some point, that run was going to end. They were not going to get through all of those great teams and actually win the Champions League. Switzerland can actually do this game after game after game. If somebody is scoring goals, if Shakiri is playing well, if Jaka is playing well, if the defense that's solid on paper is holding up. Also, the goalkeeper position. You look at what Jan Sommer just did to Bayern Munich a couple months ago. They have a very high floor, and a high ceiling. And that is a combination most teams do not have. They never disappoint you. You always feel good about your opportunity, and they're they're getting out of the group stage consistently. And it's not a situation where you feel like their run comes to an end at the round of 16 because they just can't hang with the best teams in this tournament. They kind of have the best of both worlds in that sense. So because of the group... Because of the question marks at the number nine and their inconsistency with goal scoring at major tournaments, they're one of these teams. I could tell you just about any possible scenario from failing to get out of the group to showing up in a World Cup semifinal and feeling like they really can win that game. And then it's 90 minutes and who knows what happens. They are one of the more intriguing teams, and this is probably the best version of this team that has already been fairly successful. Doesn't mean it's all going to come together, but if it does, what they have done is not a a fluke or anything like that. This is 100% legit. They are that dangerous. They are that good. They do need to be taken seriously as a dark horse candidate. Maybe not the first one you're going to go to, but... If it, if it clicks, and if Shakiri's working his magic, and they're getting goals, they are, they are up there in terms of teams I don't want to deal with in this tournament. We'll see if it actually all sort of comes to fruition and, and they reach that point. But do not underestimate this Swiss team, and I will leave it at that. Thank you so much for tuning in to this World Cup preview. Be sure to hit that subscribe button like I mentioned earlier, and I'll see you next time.